Tip number 43. When you create a schematic symbol, list all pin alternate functions. This is what I mean. Yeah. This is one of our schematics and here you can see processor or this is small part of processor. Yeah. And uh, we list all the alternate functions of the pins which are here. So for example, from the schematic you can see that this E25 pin, it can be, I don't know, GPIO3, IO27. Yeah. Or you can see directly from the schematic that E25 can be used as UART, yeah, or it can be used as uh, for camera interface and this kind of stuff. It's uh, quite a lot of work, so some people they don't do it, but it's very, very useful, okay? I'm going to show you the original schematic, the reference schematic from the chip manufacturer. Have a look. Yeah. They do not list all the alternate functions. This is what they created. Have a look how it is connected. I'm going to show you how hard it is if you do not list these functions. It it looks nice, it's beautiful, it's it's clear, it's so like bad to do, okay? It's so useless. Here it looks on this side, okay, it looks quite fine, yeah. Display zero data zero, yeah, display zero data zero, blah 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 blah. Have a look here. Yeah. CSI zero data four. Audio 3 TXC. CSI 0 data 5. Audio 3 TXD. CSI 0 data 8. I square C. Data 10. You are 1. I'm sure you are you understand where I'm getting with this. It's uh I don't know. I don't know how someone can create this as a reference schematic. If you would like to use this reference schematic in your board, it's very, you know, difficult to follow what kind of functions are hidden behind these names. Especially for this processor, if you would like to see the alternate functions, you actually need to go kind of through two data sheets to see the alternate functions. And now imagine there are hundreds, uh, sometimes there are thousands of these pins and now you need to go through the datasheet for each pin to find out how you can connect the pin, what interface you can use on the pin. And then when you are checking your schematic, you have to do it again. Yeah. So why you just don't write it here? Because it's, it looks ugly. Okay, who cares? But it's useful. Yeah? If you write here all the alternate functions and when you are checking your schematic, you immediately see it is connected correctly. When you are creating your schematic, you immediately see how this pin can be used. So when you are creating the groups of the pins for the interfaces, you know which pins you need to group together. I'm going to show you. This is what I mean. Yeah. For example, when we were creating blocks of this processor, you nicely see that these pins, they are audio pins. Yeah. So we could group them together. We don't have to look into data sheet all the time when we are moving in one pin and checking what interfaces are or what alternate functions are of this pin. And it's also very useful later. So not only when you are uh, creating the schematic, when you are uh, connecting the pins, not only when you are checking the schematic, but also later, many times, if you connect these two connectors, you need to know what are the alternate functions because you may want to use them different way, the pins which are connected to a connector. All these for example, in this particular schematic, they are connected to connector, yeah, page three, to these connectors. Now, have a look, yeah. By default, we set this interface as an audio. It's this. 
But what if you need something else? What if you need additional SPI interface? You can use it. Perfect. Yeah. For software guys, for hardware guys, even once the schematic is done, it's very useful. Not saying that when uh, someone takes your schematic as a reference schematic and they would like to modify it, again, they immediately see what are all the functions of the pins. Another example here. Yeah, this is the display interface by default, but it can be also camera interface. When we were creating these blocks, when we were deciding on how the pins will be used, it was very important to see all the alternate functions because not only one pin, it can have uh, different alternate functions, but one functions many times can be on number of different pins. So it was quite hard to create these groups, these blocks, yeah, camera block, display block, another camera, audio block. It was quite hard to create it so we could get the maximum uh, interfaces on the connector. Without this alternate function directly visible in the schematic symbol, it would not be possible. So as I say, this can be, for example, display, but you can all also very nicely see it can be camera. And for the pins like reset and this stuff, very important for the software, you can see what GPIO pin you need to use to reset the display or reset the camera. I'm sure you understand what I mean. Tip number 43, when you create a schematic symbol, list all pin alternate functions. Why? You see directly and clearly from your schematic how the pins can be used. 